Hi friends. Again, a very warm welcome. We all know AWS is the topmost cloud computing service offered by Amazon. AWS lets you build, test, deploy and manage applications and services. So this time it's 70 AWS interview questions and answers. And before we go ahead, don't forget to watch the previous amazing tutorials and interview questions. Link for the playlist and videos are in the description box. If you want some basic AWS tutorials, please log on to softwaretestingportal.com. So without much delay, let's get started. Question 1. First thing first, first and foremost basic question is what is AWS? AWS stands for Amazon Web Service. It is a collection of remote computing services also known as a cloud computing platform. It's a comprehensive cloud computing platform offered by Amazon that offers flexible, reliable, scalable, easy-to-use and cost-effective cloud computing solutions and enables users to access on-demand computing services like database storage, virtual cloud server, etc. It works on pay-as-you-go model that means dot you don't need to pay upfront for services it offer, you pay for only how much service you consumed at the end of billing cycle. The platform is developed with a combination of infrastructure as a service, platform as a service and packaged software as a service offerings. Question: What are the key product categories of AWS? Answer: The top product categories of AWS are security, compute, storage, database, networking and content delivery, and analytics. For more details, watch out softwaretestingportal.com and read the full article. Question: What the key components of AWS are? Answer: The key components of AWS are Elastic Compute Cloud EC2. It acts as an on-demand computing resource for hosting applications. AK2 is very helpful in times of uncertain workloads. Route 53. It's a DNS web service. Simple Storage Device S3, it is a widely used storage device service in AWS Identity and Access Management. Elastic Block Store, it allows you to store constant volumes of data which is integrated with EC2 and enables you to data persist. CloudWatch, it allows you to watch the critical areas of the AWS with which you can even set a reminder for troubleshooting. Simple email service, it allows you to send emails with the help of regular SMTP or by using a RESTful API call. Question, define and explain the three basic types of cloud services and the AWS products that are built based on them. Answer, the three basic types of cloud services are, computing, storage and networking. Let's understand the AWS products built based on these three cloud service types. So first, computing include EC2, Elastic Beanstalk, Lambda, Autoscaling, and Lightsat. Then storage include S3, Glacier, Elastic Block Storage, Elastic File System. And lastly, networking include VPC, Amazon Cloud Front, Route 53. Question, what is the difference in availability zone, region and edge locations? First, AWS regions. AWS region is kind of framework in which we have all the available providers. An AWS region is a geographical location with a collection of availability zones mapped to physical data centers in that region. Every region is physically isolated from and independent of every other region in terms of location, power, water supply. Example, for EC2 instance, storage, DB, we need a region in which we can build our services. We have 17 regions at the time of preparing this tutorial. Availability Zone An availability zone is a facility that can be somewhere in a country or in a city. It's a logical data center in a region available for use by AWS customers. Each zone in a region has redundant and separate power, networking and connectivity to reduce the likelihood of two zones failing simultaneously. An availability zone can be a several data centers, but if they are close together, they are counted as one availability zone. Edge locations. Edge location are the locations where end user services are provided. Edge locations are the endpoints for AWS used for caching content. Edge locations are more than regions. Currently, there are over 150 edge locations. Question. What is S3? Answer. 
Amazon S3 is known as Amazon Simple Storage Service, which allows storing any volume of data and retrieving data at any time. It reduces costs significantly, eliminating the requirement for investments. Amazon S3 offers effective scalability, data availability, data protection, and performance. Using this service, you can uncover insights from the stored data by analyzing it with various analytical tools such as big data analytics, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. Question: What is AMI? AMI stands for Amazon Machine Image. It provides the necessary information to launch an instance. It's a template that provides the information like an operating system, an application server, and applications. It's required to launch an instance, which is a copy of the AMI running as a virtual server in the cloud. You can launch instances from as many different AMIs as you need. Question: What is auto scaling? Auto scaling is a function that allows you to provision and launch new instances whenever there is a demand. It allows you to automatically increase or decrease resource capacity in relation to the demand. AWS Auto Scaling monitors your applications and automatically adjusts capacity to maintain steady, predictable performance at the lowest possible cost. Using AWS Auto Scaling, it's easy to set up application scaling for multiple resources across multiple services in minutes. The service provides a simple, powerful user interface that lets you build scaling plans for resources including Amazon EC2 instances and spot fleets, Amazon ECS tasks, Amazon DynamoDB tables and indexes, and Amazon Aurora replicas. Question: What is Amazon VPC? Amazon VPC is known as Amazon Virtual Private Cloud (VPC), allowing you to control your virtual private cloud. Using this service, you can design your VPC right from resource placement and connectivity to security. And you can add Amazon EC2 instances and Amazon Relational Database Service (RDS) instances according to your needs. Also, you can define the communication between other VPCs, regions, and availability zones in the cloud. Question: What are the steps involved in a cloud formation solution? Answer: Create or use an existing cloud formation template using JSON or YAML format. Save the code in an S3 bucket, which serves as a repository for the code. Use AWS Cloud Formation to call the bucket and create a stack on your template. Cloud Formation reads the file and understands the services that are called, their order, the relationship between the services, and provisions the services one after the other. Question: How do you upgrade or downgrade a system with near zero downtime? You can upgrade or downgrade a system with near zero downtime using the following steps of migration. Open EC2 console. Choose operating system AMI. Launch an instance with the new instance type. Install all the updates. Install applications. Test the instance to see if it's working. If working, deploy the new instance and replace the older instance. Once it's deployed, you can upgrade or downgrade the system with near zero downtime. Question: What is the difference between Amazon S3 and EC2? Answer: EC2. It is a cloud web service used for hosting your application. It is a data storage system where any amount of data can be stored. S3. It is like a huge computer machine which can run either Linux or Windows and can handle applications like PHP, Python, Apache, or any databases. It has a REST interface and uses secure HMAC SHA-1 authentication keys. Question: What is Amazon SQS? Amazon Simple Queuing Service (SQS) is a fully managed message queuing service. Using this service, you can send, receive and store any quantity of messages between the applications. This service helps to reduce complexity and eliminate administrative overhead. In addition to that, it provides high protection to messages through the encryption method and delivers them to destinations without losing any message. Question: What are the two types of queues in SQS? There are two types of queues known. Standard queues, it is a default queue type. It provides an unlimited number of transactions per second and at least one message delivery option. FIFO queues, FIFO queues are designed to ensure that the order of messages is received and sent as strictly preserved as in the exact order that they sent. 
question, what is Amazon DynamoDB? Amazon DynamoDB is a fully managed, serverless, key-value, no SQL database service. This service has many essential features such as built-in security, in-memory caching, continuous backups, data export tools, and automated multi-region replication. Mainly, you can run high-performance applications at any scale using this service. For instance, it extensively supports internet-scale applications that require high concurrency and connections for many users with millions of requests per second. Question: What is Amazon S3 Glacier? It is a storage class built for data archiving, which helps retrieve data with high flexibility and performance, so, data can be accessed faster in milliseconds, and S3 Glacier offers a low-cost service. There are three S3 Glacier storage classes, Glacier Instant Retrieval Storage, S3 Glacier Flexible Retrieval, and S3 Glacier Deep Archive. Question: What is Amazon Redshift? Amazon Redshift helps analyze data stored in data warehouses, databases, and data lakes using machine learning, milliliter, and AWS-designed hardware. It uses SQL to analyze structured and semi-structured data to yield the best performance from the analysis. This service automatically creates, trains, and deploys machine learning models to create predictive insights. Question: What are Elastic Load Balancing and its types? Elastic Load Balancing ELB automatically directs incoming application traffic to various destinations and virtual appliances. In fact, the destinations and virtual appliances may be in one or more availability zones. In this service, you can secure your applications using tools such as Integrated Certificate Management, SSL TLS decryption methods, and user authentication. There are three types of load balancers such as Application Load Balancer, Gateway Load Balancer, and Network Load Balancer. Question: What is AWS Elastic Beanstalk? This AWS service helps deploy and manage applications in the cloud quickly and easily. Here, developers need to upload the codes. After that, Elastic Beanstalk will manage other requirements automatically. Simply put, Elastic Beanstalk manages right from capacity provisioning, auto-scaling, load balancing up to application health monitoring. Question: What are the benefits of AWS Elastic Beanstalk? In a way, it is faster and simpler to deploy applications. The auto-scaling facility of Elastic Beanstalk supports to scale applications up and down based on the demands. This AWS service manages application platforms by updating with the latest patches and updates. When they use this service, developers could achieve enough freedom to choose the type of EC2 instance, processes, etc. Question: What is Amazon CloudWatch? Amazon CloudWatch is a monitoring service that would help IT professionals extensively by providing actionable insights. The tool provides complete visibility on AWS resources and applications running on AWS and on-premises. In addition, it tracks the status of applications, which would help to apply suitable response actions and optimize the performance of applications. Question: What is AWS Snowball? AWS Snowball is an edge computing and storage service. There are two features available in this service, Snowball Edge Storage Optimized Devices and Snowball Edge Computes Optimized Devices. The Snowball Storage Devices offer Block Storage and Amazon S3 Object Storage. Snowball Edge Computing Devices provide 52 VCP US and an optional GPU, and it is suitable for handling advanced machine learning and full motion video analysis. Question: What is AWS CloudTrail? This AWS service monitors user activities on AWS infrastructure and records their activities. And this service identifies suspicious activities on AWS resources through CloudTrail Insights and Amazon Event Bridge features. So, you can get reasonable control over your resources and response activities. In addition to that, it analyzes the log files with Amazon Athena. Question: What is Amazon Elastic Cache? It is an in-memory caching service. It acts as a data store that can be used as a database, cache, message broker, and queue. This caching service accelerates the performance of applications and databases. 
For instance, you can access data in microseconds using this caching service. Not only that, it helps to reduce the load on the backend database. Question, what is AWS Lambda? It is a serverless and event-driven computing service. It allows running codes virtually for applications without any provisioning or managing servers. Most AWS services and SaaS applications can trigger AWS Lambda. This service can execute any code volume due to its scaling properties. Also, decoupled services can be communicated through the event-driven functions of AWS Lambda. Question, what is Amazon ECS? It is known as Amazon Elastic Container Registry ECR. It provides high-performance hosting so that you can store your application images securely in ECR. Amazon ECS compresses and encrypts images and controls access to images. The images can be simply stored in containers. Also, they can be accessed from the containers without the support of any management tools. Question, what is Amazon EFS? Amazon EFS is a simple and serverless elastic file system. It allows adding or removing files on the file system without provisioning and management. This service creates file systems using EC2 launch instance wizard, EFS console, CLI, and a P. You can reduce costs significantly since accessed files will be moved automatically over a period. Question, what is Amazon Aurora, and mention its features? Amazon Aurora is the MySQL and PostgreSQL relational database. It performs similar like traditional databases and has simplicity and cost effectiveness of open source databases. Amazon Aurora is fully managed by Amazon RDS and automates the processes such as hardware provisioning, database setup, backups, and patching. Also, it has a self-healing storage system that can scale up to 128 terabytes per database instance. Question, what is Amazon RDS? Amazon RDS is known as Relational Database Service that allows easy setup, operation, and scaling of relational databases in the cloud, and it automates administrative tasks such as provisioning, database setup, and backups. Amazon RDS offers six familiar database engines, such as Amazon Aurora, PostgreSQL, MySQL, MariaDB, Oracle Database, and SQL Server. Question, what is Amazon Route 53? Highly scalable cloud domain name system, DNS, web service. It connects users to AWS infrastructure such as Amazon EC2 instances, Elastic Load Balancing, and Amazon S3 buckets. It connects users outside of AWS infrastructure as well. Using this service, you can configure DNS health checks and monitor applications continuously for their ability to recover from failures. Amazon Route 53 can work alongside Amazon Ing, thereby controlling the access to DNS data. Question, what is Amazon Kinesis? This AWS service collects, processes, and analyzes real-time streaming data and generates useful insights. Here, the real-time data will be video, audio, application logs, IoT telemetry data, and website click streams and you can take the right actions at the right time based on these insights. Especially, data is processed and analyzed once received rather than waiting for the arrival of the whole data. Question, what are key pairs in AWS? Key pairs are secure login information for your virtual machines. To connect to the instances, you can use key pairs which contain a public key and private key. Question, what are the different types of instances? Following are the types of instances, general purpose computer optimized memory optimized storage optimized accelerated computing question what is a ddos attack and what services can minimize them ddos is a cyber attack in which the perpetrator accesses a website and creates multiple sessions so that the other legitimate users cannot access the service the native tools that can help you deny the ddos attacks on your aws services are aws shield AWS WAF, Amazon Route 53, Amazon CloudFront, ELB, VPC. Question, you are trying to provide a service in a particular region, but you do not see the service in that region. Why is this happening, and how do you fix it? Answer, not all Amazon AWS services are available in all regions, 
When Amazon initially launches a new service, it doesn't get immediately published in all the regions. They start small and then slowly expand to other regions. So, if you don't see a specific service in your region, chances are the service hasn't been published in your region yet. However, if you want to get the service that is not available, you can switch to the nearest region that provides the services. Question, what are the different types of virtualization in AWS, and what are the differences between them? The three major types of virtualization in AWS are Hardware Virtual Machine HVM It is a fully virtualized hardware, where all the virtual machines act separate from each other. These virtual machines boot by executing a master boot record in the root block device of your image. Paravirtualization PV Paravirtualization grub as the bootloader that boots the PV Amos. The PV grub chain loads the kernel specified in the menu. Paravirtualization on HVM PV on HVM helps operating systems take advantage of storage and network I.O. available through the host. Question, name some of the AWS services that are not region specific. AWS services that are not region specific are Ing. Route 53. Web Application Firewall. Cloud Front. Question, what are the differences between NAT gateways and NAT instances? While both NAT gateways and NAT instances serve the same function, they still have some key differences. You can see the differences in both of them on the basis of attributes like Availability, Bandwidth, Maintenance, Performance, Cost, Type and Size, Public IP Addresses, Private IP Addresses, Security Groups and Network ACLs. Question, what is an Elastic Transcoder? To support multiple devices with various resolutions like laptops, tablets, and smartphones, we need to change the resolution and format of the video. This can be done easily by an AWS service tool called the Elastic Transcoder, which is a media transcoding in the cloud that exactly lets us do the needful. It is easy to use, cost-effective, and highly scalable for businesses and developers. Question: How will you configure an Amazon S3 bucket to serve static assets for your public web application? Answer: By configuring the bucket policy to provide public read access to all objects. Question, what are the attacks that AWS Shield can prevent? AWS Shield protects websites from the following DDoS attacks, UDP floods, TCP SYN floods, and HTTP GET and POST floods. Question, what is Amazon EMR? Amazon EMR is nothing but it is a cloud big data platform. This AWS service helps run large-scale distributed data processing tasks, machine learning applications, and interactive SQL queries. Also, you can run and scale big data workloads using open-source frameworks, such as Apache Spark, Hive, and Presto. Amazon EMR uncovers hidden patterns, correlations, and market trends through large-scale data processing. Question: State the difference between an instance and Amy. Amy is a template consisting of software configuration part, for example operating systems, applications, application servers if you start an instance, a duplicate of the Amy in a row is an attendant in the cloud. Question, what are the important features of Amazon Cloud Search? Important features of the Amazon Cloud are Boolean searches, prefix searches, range searches, entire text search, and autocomplete advice. Question, what are the storage class available in Amazon S3? Storage classes available with Amazon S3 are Amazon S3 Standard Amazon S3 Standard Infrequent Access Amazon S3 Reduced Redundancy Storage and Amazon Glacier Question, what are the various layers of cloud architecture explained in AWS training? Different layers of cloud architecture are Cloud Controller Cluster Controller Storage Controller Node Controller Question, name some of the DB engines which can be used in AWS RDS. Answer, MSSQLDB, MariaDB, MySqlDB, OracleDB, and PostgreDB. Question, what is the importance of buffer in AWS? Answer, a buffer helps to integrate and synchronize various components in AWS and helps to maintain equilibrium by linking multiple apparatus to deliver quick services at a uniform rate. Question, what are the types of volumes in EBS? 
Answer. Various types of volumes in EBS are listed below. General Purpose. Magnetic. Provision Diops. Cold HDD. Throughput Optimized. Question. What is the total number of buckets that can be created in AWS by default? Answer. 100 buckets can be created in each AWS account by default. We can also increase the number of buckets by submitting a request form to Amazon. Question. What are some of the security best practices for Amazon EC2? Answer. Security best practices for Amazon EC2 include using Identity and Access Management ING, to control access to AWS resources. Restricting access by only allowing trusted hosts or networks to access ports on an instance. Only opening up those permissions you require, and disabling password-based logins for instances launched from your AME. Question. What are the pricing models for EC2 instances? Answer. There are four pricing models for EC2 instances. On-demand instance. On-demand pricing is also known as pay-as-you-go. Pay-as-you-go is a pricing model that allows you to pay only for those resources that you use. Reserved instance. Reserved instance is the second most important pricing model that reduces the overall cost of your AWS environment by making an upfront payment for those services that you know will be used in the future. Spot instance. Spot instances consist of unused capacity which is available at a highly discounted rate. Dedicated hosts. It is a physical EC2 server which is dedicated for your use. It reduces the overall costs by providing you a VPC that comprise of a dedicated hardware. Question. What is the difference between stopping and terminating an EC2 instance? While you may think that both stopping and terminating are the same, there is a difference. When you stop an EC2 instance, it performs a normal shutdown on the instance and moves to a stopped state. However, when you terminate the instance, it is transferred to a stopped state, and the EBS volumes attached to it are deleted and can never be recovered. Question. How do you set up SSH agent forwarding so that you do not have to copy the key every time you log in? Answer. Here's how you accomplish this. Go to your PuTTY configuration. Go to the category SSH to auth. Enable SSH agent forwarding to your instance. Question. VPC is not resolving the server through DNS. What might be the issue? And how can you fix it? To fix this problem, you need to enable the DNS hostname resolution, so that the problem resolves itself. Question. Name and explain some security products and features available in VPC? Answer. Here is a selection of security products and features. Security groups. This acts as a firewall for the EC2 instances, controlling inbound and outbound traffic at the instance level. Network access control lists, it acts as a firewall for the subnets, controlling inbound and outbound traffic at the subnet level. Question. When would you prefer provisioned IOPS over standard RD storage? You would use provisioned IOPS when you have batch-oriented workloads. Provisioned IOPS delivers high I.O. rates, but it is also expensive. However, batch processing workloads do not require manual intervention. Question. How do Amazon RDs, DynamoDB, and Redshift differ from each other? Amazon RDS is a database management service for relational databases. It manages patching, upgrading, and data backups automatically. It's a database management service for structured data only. On the other hand, DynamoDB is a NoSQL database service for dealing with unstructured data. Redshift is a data warehouse product used in data analysis. Question. What are the benefits of AWS's disaster recovery? Answer. Businesses use cloud computing in part to enable faster disaster recovery of critical IT systems without the cost of a second physical site. The AWS cloud supports many popular disaster recovery architectures ranging from small customer workload data center failures to environments that enable rapid failover at scale. With data centers all over the world, AWS provides a set of cloud-based disaster recovery services that enable rapid recovery of your IT infrastructure and data. Question. How can you add an existing instance to a new auto-scaling group? Answer. Here's how you can add an existing instance to a new auto-scaling group. Open EC2 console. Select your instance under instances. Choose actions, instance settings, attach to auto-scaling group. Select a new auto-scaling group. Attach this group to the instance. 
Edit the instance if needed. Once done, you can successfully add the instance to a new auto scaling group. Question. What are the factors to consider while migrating to Amazon Web Services? Answer. Here are the factors to consider during AWS migration. Operational costs. These include the cost of infrastructure, ability to match demand and supply, transparency, and others. Workforce productivity. Cost avoidance. Operational resilience. Business agility. Question. If you would like to transfer vast amounts of data, which is the best option among Snowball, Snowball Edge, and Snowmobile? Answer. AWS Snowball is basically a data transport solution for moving high volumes of data into and out of a specified AWS region. On the other hand, AWS Snowball Edge adds additional computing functions apart from providing a data transport solution. The Snowmobile is an exabyte scale migration service that allows you to transfer data up to 100 petabytes. Question. Explain what T2 instances are. Answer. The T2 instances are intended to give the ability to burst to a higher performance whenever the workload demands it and also provide a moderate baseline performance to the CPU. The T2 instances are general purpose instance types and are low in cost as well. They are usually used wherever workloads do not consistently or often use the CPU. Question. What are the advantages of AWS IAM? Answer. AWS IAM allows an administrator to provide multiple users and groups with granular access. Various user groups and users may require varying levels of access to the various resources that have been developed. We may assign roles to users and create roles with defined access levels using IAM. It further gives us federated access, which allows us to grant applications and users access to resources without having to create IAM roles. Question. How is AWS Cloud Formation different from AWS Elastic Beanstalk? Answer. Here are some differences between AWS Cloud Formation and AWS Elastic Beanstalk. AWS Cloud Formation helps you provision and describe all of the infrastructure resources that are present in your cloud environment. On the other hand, AWS Elastic Beanstalk provides an environment that makes it easy to deploy and run applications in the cloud. AWS Cloud Formation supports the infrastructure needs of various types of applications, like legacy applications and existing enterprise applications. On the other hand, AWS Elastic Beanstalk is combined with the developer tools to help you manage the life cycle of your applications. Question. What are the elements of an AWS Cloud Formation template? Answer. AWS Cloud Formation templates are YAML or JSON formatted text files that are comprised of five essential elements. They are template parameters, output values, data tables, resources, file format version. Question. What is the difference between EBS and Instant Store? Answer. EBS is a kind of permanent storage in which the data can be restored at a later point. When you save data in the EBS, it stays even after the lifetime of the EC2 instance. On the other hand, Instant Store is temporary storage that is physically attached to a host machine. With an Instant Store, you cannot detach one instance and attach it to another. Unlike in EBS, data in an Instant Store is lost if any instance is stopped or terminated. Question. How do you auto-delete old snapshots? Answer. Here's the procedure for auto-deleting old snapshots. As per procedure and best practices, take snapshots of the EBS volumes on Amazon S3. Use AWS Ops Automator to handle all the snapshots automatically. This allows you to create, copy, and delete Amazon EBS snapshots. Question. How can you use AWS WAF in monitoring your AWS applications? Answer. AWS WAF or AWS Web Application Firewall protects your web applications from web exploitations. It helps you control the traffic flow to your applications. With WAF, you can also create custom rules that block common attack patterns. It can be used for three cases. Allow all requests, prevent all requests, and count all requests for a new policy. Question. What are the policies that you can set for your users' passwords? Answer. Here are some of the policies that you can set. You can set a minimum length of the password, or you can ask the users to add at least one number or special characters in it.
you can assign requirements of particular character types, including uppercase letters, lowercase letters, numbers, and non-alphanumeric characters. You can enforce automatic password expiration, prevent reuse of old passwords, and request for a password reset upon their next AWS sign-in. You can have the AWS users contact an account administrator when the user has allowed the password to expire. Question: What is the difference between an IAM role and an IAM user? Answer: The two key differences between the IAM role and IAM user are An IAM role is an IAM entity that defines a set of permissions for making AWS service requests, while an IAM user has permanent long-term credentials and is used to interact with the AWS services directly. In the IAM role, trusted entities, like IAM users, applications, or an AWS service, assume roles whereas the IAM user has full access to all the AWS IAM functionalities. Question: What is the difference between a domain and a hosted zone? Answer: A domain is a collection of data describing a self-contained administrative and technical unit, whereas a hosted zone is a container that holds information about how you want to route traffic on the internet for a specific domain. Question: How does Amazon Route 53 provide high availability and low latency? Here's how Amazon Route 53 provides the resources in question: globally distributed servers. Amazon is a global service and consequently has DNS services globally. Any customer creating a query from any part of the world gets to reach a DNS server local to them that provides low latency. Dependency. Route 53 provides a high level of dependability required by critical applications. Optimal locations. Route 53 uses a global Anycast network to answer queries from the optimal position automatically. Friends, this tutorial is an effort to help you for AWS interviews. We hope this proves to be helpful for those who are planning for AWS interviews. Please write in the comment if you want something similar or different content. And please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching and loving the videos. See you in the next one.